so and this is our first class on transportation engineering so basically the code for the subject is ECC 307 so in this uh, subject we will deal with different types of transportation modes different design of geometric features and structural design and materials for uh, road construction okay so in this particular class we will discuss about the different road development sector in India and planning sectors and other things. So transportation is basically very important and the role of the transportation in our day to day life is huge and transportation contributes to the economic, industrial, social and cultural development of any country. Transportation is vital for the economic development of any region since every commodity produced, whether it is a food, it may be clothing, industrial products or medicine, needs to be transported from one place to another. Now, in the production stage, transportation is required for carrying the raw materials like seeds, manure, coal, steel or any other raw materials like that now in the distribution stage also transportation is required from the production centers that is whenever you are producing something in the factories you need to distribute this in other places for example uh, from from farms and factories to the marketing centers and later to the retailers and the consumers for the distribution now the inadequate transportation facilities retard the process of socio-economic development of the country therefore it can be said that transportation is very much required for the societal development of any particular place societal as well as industrial development of any particular place so in order to develop any remote area the first and foremost thing is transportation so basically this is the role of the transportation now if we consider the road development sector or Indian road sector in that case that road sector as per their hierarchy is basically divided in three parts so first one is national highway then state highway then village roads other district roads etc there so first and foremost important is for national highways and state highway now 15 percent road network carries 80 percent traffic that is for the national highways and national highways comprising about only 2% of the road length and carries 40% of the total traffic and state roads comprising 18% of length carries 40% of the total traffic now India's road network is total 3.3 million kilometer and it is second largest in the world now it contributes about 5% to the GDP and second largest investment after power sector okay now uh, if we can consider the traffic growth in the national highway in that case we can see that national traffic okay NH national highway traffic has growth of 7 to 10 percent in year to year okay now passenger traffic projected to grow by 12 to 15 percent per annum and number of vehicles increasing at 30 percent per annum the national highway carries 85 percent passenger traffic and 65 percent freight traffic now freight traffic is expected to grow by 18 to 22 percent so from this data we can easily visualize the importance of national highway in the current sector now as you can see that the load carried by the national highway or traffic carried by the national highway is very much high in that case that construction procedures and maintenance and other things is also very much high for the national highways 
Okay. Now, how this national highway or state highway that are administered, somebody is there who administers all this construction part, all this maintenance parts and other things. Okay. So, let us uh, discuss about the administration of the highways. So, basically national highways is administered by Ministry of Road Transport and Highways and it is called MOTH. National Highway Authority of India that is NHAI and Border Roads Organizations or BRO. Okay, then State Highways is administered by State Governments, Public Work Departments that is PWD, Road Development Corporation and Infrastructure Development Boards. So basically based on state to state and particular area to area there this administration bodies is also changing okay now rural roads that are administered by ministry of rural development or rd state governments rural road development agencies and village panchayats now next is highway planning and development so basically for any highways to be constructed some planning is required that why the people around here need a highway okay what should be the cost associated with the highway okay and what purpose this highway will be uh, served after it construction so for construction of any highway the following factors are to be considered first one is highway planning and development issues functional and structural design of highways construction maintenance and management of the highways now different factors determining highway planning and development issues so first one is financing highways so how a highway can be financed because whenever you are constructing a highways it will add a huge cost okay there is a huge capital cost requirement for the highway so how that can be financed you need the money to construct the highway so how it can be done so financing structure and sources of finance are the primary role of government okay since the investment is huge the government with a view to encourage the private participation in this developmental projects offered various business models like boot bolt and bot the boot means build own operate and transfer that is uh, some government agencies is there like NHAI or other they will uh, call for any other industries which can construct the road for them okay so they will uh, that other companies or industries will build the road okay and after building the road that private companies will operate the road for some period of time okay so within that period of time they will uh, uh, operate the road and maintain the road and for the cost okay which they have applied over there for this reason they will levy some cost to the passengers who are uh, operated on that road like toll plaza and other things so after some time or after some years basically that year is like 40 years or 50 years like that they will hand over that road to the government agencies okay then bold means build own lease and transfer that is in that case what will happen uh, that government will build some road okay and they will lease the road to any private entities for some period of time so within that period of time that private agencies will maintain and operate on that road okay and uh, uh, they will generate some money from that road okay after uh, some time they will again hand over the road to the government then bought bought means build operate and transfer this is uh, as similar as the boot so in that case what happens uh, some uh, private companies or some existing facilities is there suppose some existing facilities is there so uh, the government will uh, will uh, ask 
to some private operators whether they can lease their properties or not if they can lease the property in that case government will hand over that property or government will take over that property from the private operators paying some money and after some time they will hand over to this to that original company so these are the different financing entities for the highways okay uh, the next thing is access management of the highways now access management is set of techniques that are used to control access to highways that how a highway can be accessed and other roadways so uh, that can be uh, maintained by different facilities provided over there like signals and other things so the benefit of access management include improved movement of the traffic reduce crashes fewer vehicle conflicts and minimize interference to the traffic flow suppose uh, i'm giving some example to the access management suppose one road intersection is there so if the road intersection is not managed properly in that case what will happen the vehicles from different direction will come over a particular place and there should be some accident and mismanagement so this uh, mismanagement can be minimized with the help of some access management tool so what are the access management tool? tools like some traffic police or some signaling system so in this way the traffic police or signaling system what they will do actually they will manage the access over any particular route so this is called access management of the highways then environmental impact assessment of highway development so it minimizes the adverse environmental impacts okay suppose one road is the uh, road has to be uh, has to be uh, built now you need to find out if you build that road whether the road will go through any uh, forest area or something like that in that case if that road will uh, go through any forest area then how it will adversely affect the environment okay now or how the adverse effect of that road after the construction will be minimized with the help of plantation of trees and other things so that that entire road can be sustainable okay next one is highway safety that design standards are essential for highway safety and the variable considered includes functional classification volume traffic mix terrain roadside environment and character of the travel so based on different terrain characteristics and road characteristics and geometric features of the highways are fixed like what should be the speed limit of that road okay what should be the, the radius of curvature in a horizontal curve okay and what should be the uh, uh, gradient of that road etc decided and they are all the safety factors then next point is road traffic noise that road traffic noise considered as one of the greatest public annoyance is often generated by unstable traffic if the traffic is unstable if it is haphazard in that case traffic noise would be there so the traffic noise prediction models are commonly designed to assist in the conception of new roads okay now next one is functional and structural design of highways okay so it refers to the calculation and analysis made by transportation designers to fit the highway to the topography of the site while meeting the safety service and performance standards to meet this objective the following considerations have to be properly addressed in the design process okay so there are different factors like design speed and design traffic volume number of lanes and lane width level of service level of service means what is the service level okay what is the quality of that road you want to achieve then side distance side distance means the visibility ahead of a driver alignment that is the central line of a roadway super elevation that is the raised portion of a side of a road in comparison with the other sides and basically that is provided in the horizontal curves uh, to uh, minimize the centrifugal effect and grades okay 
then cross section cross sectional elements there are different cross sectional element we will discuss this later on and horizontal and vertical clearance this then facilitate easy grade and curvature grade means gradient easy gradient and curvature is if you provide an easy gradient in that case vehicle will uh, will uh, overcome any uh, gradient very easily gradient means in the suppose in hilly area suppose you design that road properly in that case uh, the drivers or the uh, vehicle uh, <coughs> Uh, that the force required for the vehicle to overcome the hilly area would be minimum. Now, enable roading gradient in most of the sections. So there are different type of gradient. That is the ruling gradient, minimum gradient, maximum gradient, okay, mountainous gradient, etc. There. So we'll discuss this later on. So avoid sharp horizontal curves. Avoid road intersection near bend or at the top or bottom of the hill. So etc. These are the different factors which govern different design characteristics of the road. Okay. So this area should be considered whenever you are designing some road. Then is location design. The location design take place at the earlier stage of project planning. It refers to the macro level routing of a planned highway connecting two points through the existing highways, communities and natural terrain. Location design, suppose uh, two areas are there, okay, or two locations are there, suppose two cities are there, there are some existing routes, but you want to construct another road to connect both these points, okay. So in that case, you have to decide that your route should be passed through which location or through which localities okay so there are different factors which you need to consider whenever you are going for the location design then access design with all the necessary inputs like land use master plan population survey maps geology ecological or biological ecological biological environmental information and aerial photographs several potential routes are drawn up by the designer on a contour map suppose one map is there contour map is there so in the contour map what you have to do suppose two locations are there now you will draw possible routes to connect these two locations okay after uh, uh, then after some survey okay preliminary survey or final survey you will decide that among your selected routes which route is best suitable for a new road okay this is called access design then highway alignment highway alignment is the position or layout or center line of the highway on the ground is called the alignment that is the route should go in which way so basically that is the central line so it includes straight path horizontal deviation curvatures etc now cross-sectional design that cross-sectional element includes the right of way carriageway camber curves, road margin, etc. So whatever points is written over there. So we'll discuss these points later on. Okay. Now coming to the next thing that is road projects in India. So the construction of highways had reached an all-time high of 6029 kilometer during fiscal year 2015 to 16. And the increase pace is expected to continue for the coming years. The National Highway Authority of India plans 50,000 km road project for 250 billion, that is about 17 lakh crores, in next six years. The Road Transport and Highway Ministry has decided to use new materials and techniques in highway project on experimental basis to promote innovation in construction of roads. This may also result in saving in life cycle cost of the road construction as compared to the road construction using conventional materials so if, so uh, government are uh, encouraging the researchers to research for new materials which can be used as a road construction material so that that life cycle or existing life of the constructed road is more because it has been seen that a newly road has been constructed so after four to five years uh, that road is in very deplorable condition then government again have to construct that road 
okay so in that way that huge it is of uh, huge loss of the government because that maintenance cost is very much high so if the material uh, provided in the road construction is of high quality in that case that maintenance cost would be low then use of latest equipment it also result in saving in construction period so these are the different road project how this is going in india so uh, so in the next section we will discuss about the master plan that is how different road development planning has to be conducted okay so thank you and these are the links from this link you will get to know more about the road project planning in indian uh, sectors okay so i request all of you to go through this link and have a look into the material okay